Now joining us, Eric Bollard from Media Matters. Uh, we're going to discuss uh, uh, Rove's new book. I like the title you guys gave it, Going Rove. Uh, Courage and Consequences. That's the title of the book. Mm, mm. Uh, Eric, welcome back to The Young Turk. Hey, thanks for having me. Um, it appears that Rove has courageously lied throughout the book. <laughs> uh, and what are the consequences for that? The, the courage is rather narcissistic, to say the least. I, I don't quite still understand where that all comes from. Um, the consequences are right now you get to go on the Today Show and, and you get to be paraded around <laughs> the Beltway Press. I haven't seen a lot of pushback yet or a lot of people holding him uh, you know, responsible for a lot of the, the lies in the book, but you know, unfortunately, that's that's how the game gets played. All right, so let's talk about some of the lies. Yeah. Uh, first, he says, "Look, Bush didn't lie us in a war. He was very careful about uh, never connecting uh, Saddam and and 9/11. If you, if you, that must be right, right, Eric?" Well, I mean, this you know, no one within the uh, you know elite circles of the Bush administration has ever you know really come clean about this. What they do is they sort of carve out these spaces where they say, "Well." You know, we didn't know, therefore we weren't lying about WMD, and w would we have done it again? Well, if we had different, in you know, none of them will just come out and say, you know, this was awful. <laughs> none of them will come out and say, but you know, uh, the, the U.S. Treasury is now about a trillion dollars in the hole thanks to this war. So, you know, what Rove does, what a lot of the others do, he says, well, I, you know, from my perspective, you know, I saw people in the, inside the West Wing, you know, clearly trying not trying uh, to not exaggerate the dangers and 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 things like that but i mean you know we've had senate reports we've all we've had all kinds of reports afterwards you know clearly pointing out where instances where you know uh, president bush was just telling flat out falsehoods and things like that and uh, what what Carr, what rove also doesn't really uh, address is just the massive fear campaign that was launched in 2002 and 2003 you know, and forget about the specifics about the intelligence. It was, it was such a panic-driven fear campaign that I think is, will remain his hallmark, you know, long after he leaves the scene. So, you know, what I found interesting out of that passage, though, uh, Eric, was that he says about how careful they were to, yeah. not, to not overstate the dangers, et cetera. But, you know... Uh, you know, other than the absurdity of that comment, yeah. what what I found, uh, what my takeaway from it was, they knew they were lying, so yeah. they were very, very careful to try not to specifically do outright falsehoods, although they failed at that, as you point right. out. They did a number of absolutely provable falsehoods. That's right. But, but think about that. I mean, if I'm having a normal conversation, I'm not exceedingly careful about whether I'm lying or not, because I'm not lying. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Right, aim there, there is, is not sort of a deceive. filter of him looking back saying, it, it, it just seems to be like we could have lied a lot worse. You know? Yeah, that's it. That's <laughs> it right there. You, you, you know, you wouldn't have believed the things that people wanted to say, but, but we held back and, and told, in his perspective, you know, modest lies or, or, or limited lies. Of course, he won't even concede to that. But, I mean... Uh, you know, to to go back now and, and try to claim in 2002 and 2003 the the Bush West Wing was going through the, going through this stuff with a fine tooth comb and only picking out the most you know carefully uh, you know examined evidence. I mean, we it was the opposite. I mean, Dick Cheney set up a shop within the intel community to, to just essentially cook the books. Uh, so this idea that you know Rove was part of this extra careful uh, you know. Uh, Bush White House operation where they didn't want to misstate anything. Um, it, I would like to see some examples of some lies they didn't tell because, as far as we can, as far as we know, um, they pretty much used everything they had in their playbook. You right. know what? What were the what was the stuff they didn't tell us? <laughs> if, and just if, for if, the, if Rove claims they were being so careful. But just for the record, real quick. I mean, there's a million and a half lies, but a uh, 2008 Senate Intelligence Committee said that Bush's claims that Iraq and Al Qaeda had a partnership were quote, not substantiated by the intelligence. Right. And that indicating that Saddam was preparing to give WMD to terrorists were, quote, contradicted by available intelligence. I mean, those are two very, very important and large lies. Right, and that's, and that's also official um, uh, language for, you know, the Senate and Beltway, which is basically there's nothing here. I mean, that's a very, you know, gentlemanly way of putting it. Uh, there's no, there was never any evidence to support any of that stuff. And, you know, let's, you know, it's been seven years. Let's not forget, that was the absolute 
uh, bedrock of the argument for going to war. It was not some sort of tangential issue. That was the reason we were going to war. <laughs> that yeah. was it. Right. Eric, uh, let me connect two, two other things uh, yeah. here then. You, know, you mentioned that uh, this war cost us about, wound up costing us about a, a trillion dollars. Uh, Rove never mentioned that. I, or Bush and Cheney, I don't remember them talking about that before the war and all the costs. But now he says in the book that Obamacare <laughs> would uh, 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 add to the deficit. Um, so all of a sudden he seems to be concerned about costs. But did he misstate facts on that as well? Yeah, that's right. Because the CBO says it, it, you know there would be a, the, the the bill would be a net reduction in federal deficits of about 130 billion dollars. Um, yeah, I mean the point you make is a good one. Uh, you know this whole Tea Party movement is about this runaway deficit and government spending, and of course, um, where you know as Democrats are asking, where were these people during you know the Bush administration? It was just you know, couldn't spend money fast enough in terms of Iraq and Afghanistan. But there seems to be this total disconnect. And now people like Carl Rove are out on the front line, you know, fr spreading falsehoods in the press about, you know, the cost of o Obama health care, pointing, uh, you know, to Democrats as the one who are going to break the bank. A, it's not true. And B, how can Carl Rove even, you know, talk about that issue when, when the Bush administration um, just really exploded the books? Yeah. And now, you mentioned the teabaggers. I know you wrote about something else, too, that I wanted to touch yeah. on. Uh, the, these guys apparently are claiming that the Pentagon shooter, uh, John Patrick uh, Bedell, that he was a liberal? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was definitely the spin right out of the gate. Uh, they found that he had done some, uh, you know, 9-11 truther postings. Uh, he was a registered Democrat. Uh, and, a, and a couple other strands they were really clinging to. And it, the, the reason there's, you know, when I say that, I'm mostly talking about the right-wing blogosphere. I'm sure uh, uh, right-wing talk radio did it, too. They are so spooked by this, by the specter of violence that, it, that we see over and over again. Uh, you know, we saw in Austin a couple of weeks ago with a kamikaze pilot. Uh, and, and, and so they're so spooked by that uh, that they, you know, they run out and try to, uh, claim that anyone who does it now is not associated with them. Uh, but look, this is what happens when you push this sort of alarmist, insurrectionist rhetoric. Uh, it's gonna, it's gonna, we're gonna have results, and these are the results. So on the one hand, the right wing media loves, you know, spreading this, this insurrectionist rhetoric, insurrectionist rhetoric. But then they get hypersensitive to the claim that they're actually doing it. You know, you can't have it both ways. If you want you know, the whole anti-Obama movement to be that, you know, Obama is a tyrant and we're going to have to take up arms against him, you're going to have to deal with the consequences. And, and these are, I think, uh, some of the uh, pretty predictable consequences. You know why I thought they were going to call him a liberal, right? Cause, and, I, and I read all about it. He's, in my opinion, he's a very, very clear libertarian, right? Doesn't want the government meddling in yeah. anything. I think right? he's also mentally ill, yeah. Right, <laughs> and, and that too, right? But as soon as I heard that he was in favor of taking pot, I knew, oh, yeah, right. I knew the right wingers were like, see, liberal. Well, you know what the interesting thing is? Their real aha moment, or I think when they really felt relieved with, oh, he's a 9 11 truther, he's got to be a liberal. And as I pointed out, you know, I'm sorry, but, you know, uh, Ron Paul just won the CPAC straw vote going away. A lot of his followers have, have been, you know, interested in that movement. Um, you know, the, the Deborah Medina, the Tea Party candidate in Texas, got in trouble a couple of weeks ago because she wouldn't denounce the 9-11 truth or movement. There's a, I think there's a pretty heavy overlap between the, the Tea Party movement and some of these 9-11 truthers. Can I tell you something? If 9-11 happened uh, during a Democratic president's oh reign, at least 51% of the Republican Party would believe that it was oh, a yeah. plot by the Democrats. Yeah, that was a plot by Obama. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. There, there's no question. Right now, about 50% of the Republican Party believes that the 2008 election was stolen by Acorn for Obama. Uh, you no, tell me they wouldn't believe 9-11 was an inside job if it was the Democrats in charge? <laughs> oh, come on. I know. So the, the, <laughs> over time, the 9-11 truth or thing is, is, I don't even think, is associated with... Uh, with, uh, you know, a Bush derangement syndrome or anything like that, that now clearly falls, I think, falls into this, you know, fanatical hatred of the federal government. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I don't think this this Bedell case is as clear-cut as some of the other, you know, uh, sort of vigilante acts of violence, but this is the environment they've created, this is what they've fostered, and now they've got to deal with it. 
And, uh, you know, they can try to turn these people into Greenpeace activists, but <laughs> it ain't true. And, and liberals, even during the Iraq war, there was never any serious strain of debate that the way we're going to fix this war is we're going to, you know, take up arms and, and declare war on the Bush White House. You know, we're, the citizens are going to revolt. That's not part of the liberal or progressive agenda. It's certainly part right now of the anti-Obama agenda. All right. Eric Bolt from Media Matters. Everybody check out uh, what Eric has written on MediaMatters.org. Thank you for joining us. Watch the live show at TheYoungTurks.com.